So let's talk about Veras by Evolve Labs. So if you're unfamiliar with what it is, it's an AI tool that can take any image and transform it into something stylized or realistic. I took that simple clay model and turned it into this realistic rendering. And then I turned it into this pencil drawing. And all I did was add a prompt, tweak some settings, and I got results like this. So I'm gonna walk through what these settings do so you can get started and play around with this tool. So when you first open up Veras, you're gonna be on the Explore screen. And the Explore screen's got all these different presets that the team has put together. And you can also make your own presets. So if we were to just go through this, this would make a timber realistic kind of view. This is optimized for kitchens. This is for drawings. This is for models. So you've got a lot of different options in here, right by default, really handy. And what they're doing is they're actually overriding some of the settings that I had before. So I'm gonna go over to Compose, and this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. The presets are okay and everything, but you know, if you're gonna be using this professionally, it's good if you understand what each of these settings do, that way you can get better results. I'm in the Compose mode, and what I need to do first is drop in an image. So you could go right over here, or literally drag an image in. So I'm gonna switch back. This is the image I'll be using. So how this works is you need to give it some information in the beginning. And these are just true or false questions. You know, is this an interior, an aerial view? Do you want a lot of nature? Do you want it to feel atmospheric? Do you want it to feel cinematic? And should this mimic film photography? So since this is an interior view, I'm gonna to switch to is interior. I'm gonna turn off cinematic. And don't worry that I have this preset selected here. I'm overriding this, doesn't matter. I wanna create a realistic version of my kitchen. This is a really great way for me to generate different options of an image or a project. So let's say I'm designing this kitchen. I'm gonna go over here to my prompt and I'm gonna say realistic photo, modern kitchen. And with any AI tool, the more information you can give it, the better. So I'm just saying modern kitchen, but let me think about like the cabinet colors or the ceiling colors or the time of day. So let's say dark cabinets, and let's think about what the backsplash material could be. So I could say white stone backsplash, dark ceiling, palm trees outside, sunny day. And as you can see, I'm just giving it more and more information. That way, when something comes out, it's more specific and it's not random. So what we have here is the negative prompt. And the negative prompt is what don't you want in here? So this is what I want, this is what I don't want, and this will actually restrict it from spawning any of that in. So if I put people, it won't add any people by default. So when it comes to prompting, whenever I have a keyword or a phrase, you wanna end it with a comma. So let's say people, cars, you know, I'm just adding things. They're not gonna actually appear, but just so you understand. So then we have geometry override, and you need to think of this as respect versus creativity. Zero is highly respectful, meaning it's not gonna override the geometry here, and 100 means super creative. But the problem is you need to think of it as a balance. If you constrict it to zero as a geometry override, you're giving it no room to do anything creative. So when it comes to optioning, I usually keep it around like 10 to 20. If I go super high, it's gonna make its own kitchen. It's not even gonna be related to my starting image, and that's not gonna be great, right? So we wanna keep it semi-low. Then material override, again, zero is pure structure, like let's preserve what's here, and 100 is super creative. So here, since I just have a clay model and there's nothing here, I'm okay with leaving it at 100. By default, the prompt strength will be at 60, and this is going to be, you know, how dramatic do you want your prompt to be? Highly recommend leaving it at 60. It works really well there. Then we have width and height. This is actually just the pixel width and height of your image. When you drop an image in, let's say it's landscape, it'll actually match that. Since I dropped in a square image, it's giving me 1024 by 1024. The seed, this is basically, every time you generate an image, it's gonna give you a unique number to that generation. That way, if you ever wanna revisit it, you can plug in the same seed and it's the same image, which is kind of nice. I always leave it on automatic because I want new options, right? The render engine, as of right now, we've got version six sharp and version six. I personally like version six sharp because it is for preserving detail, which is what we want to do here. And then lastly, these are the amount of options. And since I'm on a trial, I'm only limited to doing one at a time. The trial for Veras is actually pretty good. As you can see here, I've got about 15 days to try it out and I've got 30 generations. So this is great as a free option. So I'm gonna hit render. Anytime I render something, it's gonna live in the queue right here. That's why I was able to switch between these so easily. And anytime you click on them, it'll actually load up your previous settings. 
So that's really nice. So in case you ever forget what you did previously, you just click the image and it'll pop up. And due to the size of your image, it may take a shorter period of time or longer. So we've got the stone, we've got the dark countertops, and it's pretty respectful in terms of what I was asking for. And I can go in and iterate this and add more and more details. So that's the nice thing about this tool. I'm not stuck with this. I can actually just keep on refining and generating more and more options. So overall, I'm happy with this image, but I want to continue iterating. So let's see, I can add skylight above. That way I can get some lighting from in here. I don't want to generate all these vents. So I'm going to put vents and diffuser in here. That way it's not generating new things. I could also lower the geometry override if I'm seeing too many new things are coming in. That's what I was talking about earlier, how like you got to be careful about how much creativity you give it because then it can go a little crazy. So I'm going to render this. All right, this is much better. So we're seeing that we got less things to spawn up here and we got our skylight. So this is much better. So let's say you're you're happy with your image and you just want to save it out. That way you can use it for your own presentation or something. You can go right over here to save the image. And that's it. That's really how you use Veras. Uh, one more tip I give before we, uh, we wrap up here is let's say you really like these settings and they're generating really nice results and you want to use it on future images. You can just go right up here to do a save as to give you a whole new preset. I highly recommend playing around with these settings until you're happy with the results and then save that preset. That way, when you load up Veras, you can just pick from one of these and save you some time moving forward. If you have any questions on how to use Veras, please feel free to drop a comment below. See you next time.